Hey everyone, welcome back to Star Labs Confidential. On today's podcast, we're going to be talking about the upcoming web series, Star Quick, and with us now is Jerry Peacock, one of the show's co-creators. Welcome to the show, Jerry. Well, nice to be here. Thanks for having me. So how did the idea for Star Quake began exactly? Well, it started out really just with the main character um, that is Scott Wells, uh, Alcor, in his superhero form. We, uh, a buddy of mine is uh, a comic book artist and he's always doing uh, commissions and artwork and various stuff like that. And yeah, I was talking with him. I was like, why is it superheroes always seem to have these incredibly conspicuous alter egos? You know, they're the star reporter or the billionaire with a conscience or, you know, things like that. And I was like, where is the everyday average Joe guy, the construction worker, the farmhand, you know, who gets superpowers? And so we just started building a little character who initially looked a lot different than uh, what he evolved into for the series. But uh, as we uh, refine the character and started talking about his backstory. Um, I was talking to Ryan and I was like, what if we did this as a series? Yeah, I had just come off of doing uh, the Quest of the Muscle Nerd documentary and kind of just needed a new project. And so I was like, hey, you know, there could be, you know, this could be, you know, something that people really relate to. You know, let's roll the dice and see what happens. And so that was the genesis of it. And it's just kind of grown from there. Yeah, from what I saw with the eight minute short that you guys did, I was impressed with the physicality you guys brought with your characters, as well as for like Alcor, Mizar, and even um, Orion, I think his name was, because I interviewed uh, Derek last year. We purposely left all the other characters um, flexible enough so that the people that portraying them could put their own spin on them. Um, Derek, uh, he very much wanted to do where you, know, you had the two faces where he was very shy and quiet when he's in his regular form. When he's in his superhero form, he's he's gregarious and you know he's over the top and you know likes to have a great time and it really worked for his character and what we wanted to do with uh, the character of Orion. Whereas we worked with uh, Brian Martinez who plays Mizar to develop the character of Mike Martin, uh, Mizar, and you know what traits do we want him to have and what was his background? Because he started out very different from what I had in mind. And Brian is like, no, no, you know, I want to do this, this, and this. And I'm like, yeah, that works. <laughs> yeah, because with uh, Orion, like, it definitely gave me Spider-Man vibes in terms of personality for how, like, Peter would start being all, like, you know, meek and quiet but yet, yet when he has the mask on as spider-man he's all like cracking jokes you know trying to be funny yeah and i think derek had mentioned that he he took a lot from uh, uh human torch in the original fantastic four movie when he is in his superhero form so yeah i don't know if you know in the eight minute short you know he's only briefly uh shown in his regular form and he's just kind of watching from the side but um you know that's still that's he's got that vibe you know i'm no i i can't get involved i'm over here i don't want to make noise <laughs> <laughs> yeah and then he's the one who shows up to kind of in a lot of ways save alcor from himself <laughs> yeah save for a fight between those two they definitely need someone that's a good referee <laughs> and it's you know for the character of mizar he's um, he's kind of the anti-hero, but he starts out as the bad guy's lackey. And, uh, you know, he's seduced by the promises of power and, and glory and all that, because his backstory is he's a former prize fighter and was a big time star, but he got an injury that ended his career. And he's very bitter about that, that he didn't reach the pinnacle of his stardom. And, you know, our bad guy Romulus comes in and says, now you have a new chance, you know, you could be even more, you know, you know, charming and, you know, promising him everything. But we didn't want him to just be the lackey. This is just a guy who was susceptible to that influence. And so as the story goes along, there'll be, you know, a development that kind of pulls him back mm -hmm. and he'll go from 
you know, that lackey role to more like, you know, how do I get out of this? Yeah, I would say for Miser, it definitely gave me like um, anime vibes for how like they create like the hero and having an anti-rival, but then still have like someone else to be the main bad guy, whether it's like the mastermind or just someone new, but for, for the hero and rival to still like, you know, clash heads. Yeah, and that's just, you know, all part of keeping depth with your characters. So, so uh, how much of like uh, comics like Marvel and DC have helped influence with the writing, or was it purely original, so to, so to speak? Well, um, I've always been much more of a DC fan than Marvel fan. I like them both, but you know, I kind of was always more partial to the DC aesthetic. And so when we were designing the look for all the characters, um, especially for Alcor, we're like, I want to say what's old is new again. And so the, the classic Superman image with the cape, the trunks, everything, let's use that. And let's, you know, try and build that up with the character for his look, because there were a lot of design choices that were crucial to the characters, right down to their coloring. You know, Alcor is very conflicted, you know, always, and it's always, you know, you know, why me and all this kind of stuff. He's always got that emotional turmoil. So he has that orange and red and, and gold coloring uh, that always kind of, you know, are present when you're talking about conflict. Whereas Mizar, who's always got a touch of envy for people who have, you know, achieved other things, you know, and he, you know, had that chance taken away. Well, so he's green. Makes sense. <laughs> Looking at the, the DC, the Marvel, we could take elements from all of them that we weren't, you know, bound to any one ideology. You know, Marvel, they've always got kind of the soap opera element with their stories and uh, DC, they're always kind of uh, a little stoic, you know, rigid, you know, superheroes first and Marvel's human first. But we're like, we don't need to be bound by any of that. Let's do you know, a story that is the best of two worlds. Yeah, I agree, because with Alcor, it's like, it's like, it gives me like a mixture, I guess, with Superman vibes, but also, I guess, Spider-Man in terms of personality, because besides with this, I can only think of Spider-Man in terms of how, like, he feels cursed with all this power, yet he doesn't, like, he just wants a normal life. He doesn't want all these responsibilities, but... It's more like, oh, I never wanted this, but I'm stuck with it. So he doesn't try and force it away, but he doesn't just embrace it right out of hand. And he has always got to deal with the, the problems. That's one thing we said very early on, like how would you possibly keep like a normal job, a nine to five, if you were a superhero? You can't, you know, if you have to rush off and save somebody, and they're gonna like, where'd he go? <laughs> You're gonna get fired. <laughs> so, yeah, like, pretty we, can, we can use that. <laughs> yeah, that's a good point. Like, you know, it only works unless you're like either a teenager, rich, or have the kind of job where they don't check where you've been. This is a, it's a good take, and I'm curious to see like where all five of you, I guess, kind of like uh, come together and stop uh, Romulus. That's the name of the bad guy, right? Yep. And see, my my character. Akinar, see, because you have the three kind of mortal superheroes and you have the two uh, celestials, as we call them. And my character is Akinar, and he's not an alien per se. He is a human manifestation of the positive energies that, you know, in the universe. Prior to them getting sent to Earth, they didn't really have a physical form. They were just the energies in a coherent state. And Romulus is, of course, the negative. And through, the, you know, for their own stories, they begin to discover what humanity is, what it means to be human, and how it affects them. For my character, he, they, they both arrive in the late 1930s. We had said that we don't want them here for like thousands of years. No, you know, they, they need to discover in the short term. And so, uh, uh, Akinar, you know, comes to Earth. And uh, you know, as you know, things progress, he's learning, you know, uh, regular experiences, 
he has a chance to fall in love and have a child. But he experiences tragedy because that wife he has dies in childbirth and the child dies only moments later. Because this is you know, kind of the, the 50s at this point in his story when that happens. So he better understands the human condition than Romulus does, who being the negative side succumbs to greed and ambition and, uh, and hatred. So, yeah, it's like I said, it's their own uh, journey of discovery. Interesting. So I guess it's like, uh, I guess you could say it's like cosmic beings of like a pure energy that decide to give themselves like um, human-like forms just to experience. Well, it, it wasn't just random because they had to come to Earth. Um, the story arc, we have uh, an event called uh, the Great Convergence. And it's sort of like they have to be here to monitor that event. Because if it doesn't go off right, it could destroy their entire universe. That's one thing I want to ask about your suits. Like, I guess when it comes with the design of the suits, like that's mostly all just you guys in terms of like, your physiques. Like, there's not much padding or anything. Well, I'm getting old, so. <laughs> well, come on, like you look like we, we have to, we have to resort to such tactics. But yeah. no, I mean, if I'm doing any type of hero that requires a muscular physique, I do do a complete training program so so one more question is that for in terms of for start quake because right now you're trying to raise funds to have it be shown in 3d now it's just for like for the um opening segment to be in 3d uh this is for the um the next uh short that we do with it which is actually the first 10 minutes of our pilot uh, episode that we've written is our you know opening with an epic superhero battle scene and we want to do that in classic 3D with the, the anaglyph, the colored glasses and all that kind of good stuff. And we've found uh, a lot of updated technologies that can really present that very well. Plus, we don't have the money to do like Avatar <laughs> or anything like that. So, <laughs> but uh, when we were planning this out, I'm like, you know what? This is superhero stuff. Let's give them as much as we possibly can. I said, let's do 3D. Let's have them flying directly at the screen and let's have them up in the air and make it feel like they're, you know, coming out of the screen as they do it. And so we're like, yes, that's going to be our aim. If we can get, you know, the Indiegogo fully funded, oh, it will be, you know, truly epic. Should be quite a show. But I would say that'd be our time for now. Thank you again for joining me on on this podcast. And yep. free, as, and Thanks for having me. No problem. And uh, for everybody who can contribute to the Indiegogo, just simply go to starquakeseries.com and you can make a pledge there. Thanks for watching, everybody. Stay tuned for the full version of this podcast by the end of the month. In the meantime, be sure to click the link on the description box to donate to the Starquake Indiegogo Fund. Also, click on the thumbnail here to see the 8-minute short they made as you get a taste to see what's in store for the rest of this series. Be sure to like and subscribe to this channel for more content. This is BD Knight, signing off.